Good evening. Welcome, welcome to uh, the second annual Great American Songbook Hall of Fame induction. It is great to celebrate with all of you and to share the glory of everything that this evening represents. Tonight is a celebration of the Great American Songbook. It's also a celebration of the, uh, the Palladium and the Carmel uh, Center for the Performing Arts because we are creating a certain... Uh, uh, cultural accessibility in the community that we're very proud of and for me a part of that is keeping classic music and art alive for contemporary generations and future generations. Sit back and enjoy the performance a little while I tell you a story. A Facebook friend of mine recently posted that he was talking about Ethel Merman in front of a group of young people when one of them asked, who's Ethel Merman? Yeah, I had that same reaction too. It shows why projects like the Great American Songbook are so essential, for not all of the legacy of great performers and their songs will pass itself along to the next generation simply by osmosis. Sometimes it takes a little care and feeding and some deliberate effort. To tonight's honorees, promoting America's musical heritage is critical to our society, for music is a powerful force indeed. Music is something that is different from any other art or discipline because it can heal, it can transform, it can make people change. feel things, it creates change. Music to me is a, a lifeline. It can stir passion, it can make you feel sexy, it can make you feel deeply, profoundly sad, it can make you joyously happy. What else can do that except someone you love dearly? So it becomes a lover, as it were, music. I remember you telling me that as a little girl, you, you had a little phonograph and, and you were tr sh shuttled around to different places as your parents worked mm -hmm. everywhere. And you were talking about how those records expressed what you could not express yes. as a little girl. But they said, always said what I couldn't say, you know, and they still do. Music can change your mind. You want, I mean, if you're really upset, you just put something on to make you feel better, or put something really the driving on and it gets it out of you. You know, it helps you. Music is healing, you know, and fun. It's fun. Music could do more than the American Congress can do. Congress does nothing. Music moves mountains. And for those of you watching who may aspire to being a 2050 honoree, how you know that music and you have a destiny? I think it's a calling. It's very hard to objectify in that sense because you either are it or you aren't it. It's a little bit like spending every waking moment thinking about a note or a, or a lyric or someone else's song or some song that you'd like to write or some song that you'd like to record or something that you heard somebody play once 20 years ago. And it, it's just this, this constant churn of, of musical ideas that just never stops. But there's another churn that has the musicians rethinking and redefining not their craft, but their industry. There is a siege mentality that, that is not unwarranted because the barbarians are at the gate. I was, I was performing last night in New York with a young girl who would just had 6,000 streaming performances on Pandora and she got a check in the mail. She was so excited to get her, her check from Pandora and she got a check for two cents. Unions and guilds and organizations are really circling the wagons now to, to, for a kind of an Armageddon of over intellectual property rights to see whether they will whether they will endure into this, uh, this digital age or not. The resolution of such weighty matters are for another time. This night is about music. We ask our honorees about their own personal songbooks. What music gets them going? Swing will never die. Swing will never die. I feel some, somehow, sometimes that since I was born in the 40s, I was born in 46, that I, maybe I was listening from my mother's womb because all those songs are familiar to me. It just, it's like, it's so natural to me. I always loved George Gershwin's tunes, always. I love um, Cole Porter, but I think it's wonderful that Michael Feinstein made this into something 
that I think over time will be as big as the Grammys. And uh, I think the nation owes Michael Feinstein a great deal. In a perfect world, one day the American Songbook Award would mean as much as the Grammy or would mean as much as the Oscar. I mean, in, in a perfectly just and honest universe, it would. This is, a, this is a very special moment in my life. My God, I'm, I'm here on the, same, on the same list with uh, Liza Minnelli and Jimmy Webb and Frank Sinatra. And then there's Rita Moreno, this Puerto Rican kid. Uh, I, you can't begin to imagine how meaningful this is to me. I feel privileged to be in this kind of distinguished company. I'm thrilled. If I'm an asterisk on the last page uh, of, the, of, the, of the Great American Songbook, um, you know, I'm, I'm delighted by proximity to be in the same general area as a, a learner and low, um, Rogers and Hart, Cole Porter, Harold Arlen. No, I'm very humbled about it. It's so nice to just to be able to kick back and enjoy the show. And yet, at the same time, without any discernible effort to be able to feel important. I do not take the honor lightly, and uh, I'll cherish every, every minute of this evening.